In this time lapse, I'll show you how I've made this little celebratory bear that is super happy that the Non Fungible People project has sold out. I started making him just after I received news of that, and the journey, of course, begins in Das Studio. I've never used this character for anything, and I thought maybe this is a great occasion. So I'll load him in and check out the materials that come with it. I wanted him to have a really bright and excited face, so I'm trying some expressions out on him and they kind of work to open his mouth, but excitement isn't exactly what I see in his face right now. So I'll try several things, blending the face controls expressions together until I find something that's kind of there, but also not quite. So I decide I'm gonna go into ZBrush and give him that huge, big smiley expression. I'm also gonna lift the eyes up a little bit and I think I'm kind of there. So it's, it's just broad strokes with the move brush and uh, that's that's got him somewhere, but his eyes aren't exactly saying, hey, you know, I'm super happy. I'm trying that in ZBrush and of course, uh, no success. I don't really know how to use ZBrush. I just doodle around. And then I decide to try it in Blender instead. All I need to do is lift up the eyelids and I'm gonna open up his eyes a little bit just so that they can that they potentially can pop out there. That's kind of that. I'm doing all this work and then bringing in the morph, uh, the second morph essentially, uh, and then I realize, hey, the character actually comes with a lot of morphs and I could have really saved myself a lot of work there. So note to self, just check out what morphs actually come with the character before you painstakingly create your own. Then it's on to finding the correct pose. I'm using a gorilla pose that works quite well on the little guy, but uh, the eyes, I'm not entirely sure about the eyes, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm anticipating some post-production on those. But for the render, just to finish off the render, I'm uh, showing him more or less from the front here without the feet in this excited pose, and I'm using an HDRI from 3D Universe to get the base lighting right. And then just to accentuate the character, I'll add a backlight from the end there. Then it's on into Photoshop, where I'm anticipating using the Magic Liquify tool. I've watched a tutorial from my friend Rod the other day, and uh, he gives us some tips on how to do this very subtly. I wanted a really broad effect, and I thought I'm going to make that happen. Meanwhile, I'm rendering a high-resolution version that I'm going to apply this on again. The first one was basically a practice run, and the second one I'm playing around and finding different values for the eyes. And I'm also accentuating the mouth a little bit, as well as changing the eye shape so that both the eyes as well as the mouth basically keep smiling. Clip Studio Paint also has a liquify tool. In fact, they recently just got it and I thought I'll take this opportunity to try that out and see which one works better. So I gotta admit that the controls that I have in Clip Studio Paint are better. It's kind of implemented as a brush rather than a separate filter tool. So I'm basically using best of both worlds here, a little bit of what the liquify tool in Photoshop has to offer and the one in Clip Studio Paint. And then I'm uh, playing around with backgrounds. I'm trying things out here, maybe uh, some speed lines or maybe some rain effect. And in the end, I decide that maybe the bear is standing in front of a big city and there's uh, a few stars in there. And he's saying, hey, the NFP project has sold out. And uh, the background is a little bland at this point. So I'm gonna add a little background picture in there, which is a nightscape cityscape. I'm making him separate from the current dark just by making a duplicate of the layer and blurring himself out and that gives him that kind of bare colored glow there. And this is the nighttime image. I'm making that dark and uh, blurring that out a bit so that he separates again from that. Adding a small vignette and a drop shadow to the speech bubble and then we're there. Thank you so much for watching this little high level overview of how a scene like this comes together. I've spent about an hour and a half on this so um, yeah, this was about 20 times that speed. Take care, I'll see you in the next video.